Today on Shop Nation, we do a quick shop tour and show just how far we've come on this shop build in the past two years. What's up guys, it's Travis with Shop Nation. Today I wanted to take the time to do a shop tour so that we can see just how far we've come over the past two years. It's absolutely crazy to think that I started this journey on YouTube two years ago and what it looked like when we started. If you're in the mood to laugh, um, go watch the first video on this channel, that's the initial shop tour. I had no idea what I was doing, first of all. But second of all, and most importantly, the shop looked totally different. So now fast forward to two years later and we've made quite a bit of progress. With anything in life, and I'm sure you can relate, there's ups and downs. There's been times when I can make a lot of progress in a short amount of time and others that are kind of spread out. So if you're new to the channel, this is gonna be a good snapshot of where we are right now. And if you're already a member of Shop Nation and you've been along for the ride, this is gonna be a good review of what we've done. Plus, I'll mention some of the things that I still have planned that I wanna do. Let's jump into it. It seems like every shop tour I do, I start in this corner, so why break tradition? As you come into the shop, you have the table saw sort of right here in the center, and along this wall is sort of some flat storage. There really hasn't been a whole lot of change to this area, other than more junk accumulating. One of the changes that I know I wanna make is relocating this ladder, and then I think ideally where I wanna end up is, first of all, relocate all the crap, but second of all, put some sort of tool wall here, or a cleat system. As we shift on over, we have the exact same locker setup that's been here really since the beginning. This is a set of old school lockers that my father-in-law gave to me, cleaned them up, painted them, and it serves as a really great storage solution. The majority of which is actually empty at the moment. A lot of what was in here is relocated to the cabinets, but it still has things like car wash supplies and fertilizer and things like that. So next to the lockers is my toolbox, which is largely unchanged for the past year and a half. I'm still using the Kaizen foam tool organization method that I showed in one of the very early, pretty crappy videos, but it works like really well. Having a very specific spot for each tool means that when I take a tool and then use it, I'm way more inclined to go put it back because I know there's an empty spot that's the exact same shape as the tool I just took out. So it's kind of a mental thing, but it totally works. So I do plan on organizing some more of these drawers. There's still a couple left to do. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. And then as we make our way down the wall past the toolbox, we get to the bandsaw and drill press. Now, if you haven't seen, I put out a video where I reviewed both of these as well as my table saw. So if you're in the market for a drill press, a bandsaw, or a table saw, I'd urge you to go check those out. Now, there's a couple things that I wanna add to this area. The first is some sort of small organization system for the drill press itself. What I've found through using the shop is that having everything drill related in one spot kind of makes sense some of the times and then not really others. There's stuff that I use just on the drill press, which would be way more efficient located at the drill press. So if you saw my video on the drill storage cabinet, I'm probably gonna end up doing something a little bit different and having a smaller cabinet just dedicated for this. And the second bigger area of opportunity is this giant wall above these two tools, which is empty. Now I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do there yet, but in a small shop that's tight on space, that can't go unused. If you have ideas, I'd love to hear them on what I should do there. Now, as we make our way to this back corner of the shop, there's been quite a bit of improvement that's happened back here. One of my favorite of which is this little disc belt sander and the organization system for all the belts and discs. For whatever reason, this video isn't very popular. Don't know why, but that's okay. I like it, that's all that matters. One of the other improvements on this corner of the shop is this little workbench made of list of cabinets. It was an easy project, but it gives me a really sturdy working surface for things that I'm not doing on the workbench. I'm still waiting to fill all those drawers up, but they will get filled. And then finally, one of the most recent additions, which is the lumber rack. That was the last video we released before this one. Again, that was a simple project, but the premise was is that area above the door in this back corner was gonna go to waste. So why not use it? And it has made a big difference in the shop. So I really like how that turned out. If you're interested, go check out that video. And then as we swing along this wall, this is the area that I try and keep out of most of the shots because I'm not very proud of it. On the wall, we have this drill cabinet, which as I mentioned, I'm probably gonna change up and split between two different locations. So I'll make one that's a little bit smaller for here and a smaller one for the drill press itself. Below the drill cabinet is the dehumidifier. So I still use this thing daily. So when the garage door is closed and the shop is buttoned up, this thing kicks on and runs and maintains 55 to 60% relative humidity. And as I showed in the shop humidity video, it actually does make a difference. I've noticed that a lot of my tools are not rusting at all or at a much lower rate than they were when this wasn't here. I eventually wanna to move to a condition shop, so this is really a temporary measure, but if you have a garage shop and you wanna lower the humidity, look into this. Go watch my video, I'll show you exactly how I figured it out and I can tell you that from experience that it works. And I live in Houston and it's really humid, so I don't wanna hear it, okay? And then finally, next to the dehumidifiers is really the area that I'm least proud of, and that's these two junky generators that are just hanging out in a shop. 
why are they here? They're here because I live on the Gulf Coast and hurricanes show up every once in a while, so you have to have generators. At minimum, I'm going to consolidate to one generator, but I really want to either relocate it or build it into a piece of shop furniture in some way. So have yet to plan that out. If you have any ideas, let me know. So that brings us to this corner of the shop, which is really not utilized very well. So directly to my left are the generators. This is kind of an open area. And then there's about 20 inches between where the cabinet surface ends and this wall. Now, as I mentioned in the cabinet build video, I originally meant for this to be sort of a dust collection enclosure, but I shot away from that and incorporated it into the cabinets themselves, which we'll talk about here in a second. So in my mind, there's really two opportunity areas of storage in this corner. The lower area, which could be like a trash can or some other means of storing things. And then the upper area, which I think could be a clever place to store smaller scrap and stock of material. So that's likely gonna be a project coming up. And then finally we get to the shop cabinets. This is probably the most popular project that I've done on the channel so far. And it was a long journey, but man, is it worth it. If you were not aware, I now have full build plans available for these cabinets, uppers, lowers, dust collection, you name it. And these plans aren't just a cut sheet either. I tend to take probably way too much time in building these plans, but they're very concise, very detailed, and should get you from A to B, really no matter what your skill level is. So if interested, go check those out. But this is far and above the best upgrade I've made to my workshop. The workbench that we'll talk about here in a second is really great, it's phenomenal, but this totally outdoes it. I have so much storage, so much workspace, a functional miter station, oh, but we're not done yet. There's even more. Inside of these cabinets is a fully integrated dust collection system. By using an IVAC Pro switch, a dust right separator, and a shop vac, I can provide dust collection to the entire cabinet via three blast gates. Pretty cool. What's not cool, however, is how inefficient dust collection is on miter saws. I don't care what brand you have, they all suck, but not literally like it sucks up to, Never mind. This is a huge area of opportunity that I've been kind of ignoring up until now. I need to develop a dust collection system that actually utilizes the dust collector and collects dust efficiently. Now I've been doing a lot of research and I think I have a really cool solution for that. So stay tuned. If you wanna make the biggest bang for your buck improvement in your shop, do something like this. Now as we make our way down the wall of the cabinets, at the end I've got my air compressor and then hose reel. When I designed the cabinets for my space, I wanted to leave room for that. I think it's a really good use of space because like the other corner, it would have been wasted. And when I need shop air, it's a really good system. And then immediately next to that is sort of this small wall with a really popular project, which is the shop towel organizer. It's kind of a cool idea I had to consolidate all the different types of towels and rags in one spot so that when you have dirty hands or you just need to clean something up, you always go to that one place. Now below that shop towel organizer is sort of a blank area that I look at as an opportunity. I have a couple of concepts sort of floating around but nothing concrete, but if you have an idea, share in the comments. And then finally, we're back at the front of the shop where I have this wood storage, which is terrible use of space. Now, if you watched the previous video to this one, which was the lumber rack, I indicated that I was gonna do something with this as well, and that's still a plan. The idea here is that I'm gonna use it to store wood more efficiently, but also incorporate some modular organization. So keep your eyes out for that one. I think it's gonna be good. Okay, so that brings us to the center of the shop, which is kind of the heart of where everything happens. So right at the entrance, we have my table saw, the Delta 36-725, which again, I've done a review on. So if you're interested, if you're in the market for a table saw, looking to upgrade, I do recommend that one, check out that video. And then directly beyond the table saw is my workbench slash assembly table. So this workbench represents the second most popular thing that I've ever built on the channel. And I gotta say, I love it. And just like the cabinets, this has fully integrated dust collection, but not with a shop vac, with a full-fledged dust collector. To me, this represents the workhorse of the shop and I use it for just about everything. I recently just did a video where I talked about all the features of the workbench, as well as announcing that I have full build plans for this available as well. So if you're looking for a really great multifunctional, sturdy, solid workbench, go check this one out. Now, another part of the shop worth mentioning is the Wen air filter. Um, I'll be the first to admit, I don't use this as much as I probably should, but if you do any amount of woodworking, I really recommend you get one of these. They're not that expensive. They do a good job of cleaning up the air and are just kind of worth peace of mind. I would love to know what you guys think of the shop progress so far. I think it's come a long way. Yes, there's still a long way to go, but that's the whole reason we're here. I started Shop Nation with the premise that, hey, if I'm gonna go through this journey, I might as well share it. We're gonna learn along the way. And if I can help somebody else in their similar journey, it's a win. Again, I'm showing you the before so that we can see where we started so that down the road, 
when this is all done, we can look back and say, wow. Now with that being said, if you wanna support the channel in any way, there's really three main ways of doing that. The first being watch the videos and interact. So you're already doing that, so thank you. What helps me and the channel on top of just watching is interacting, so liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos, all that stuff is great, and I sincerely appreciate every single one. And the second way, which is also free, is to use my product links. So these are affiliate links that direct you to a website. I predominantly use Amazon because everyone loves Amazon. But what's great about these links is that whether you buy the product that I'm linking or you just buy something else while you're there, anything that you buy, Amazon will give me a commission as a result of directing traffic their way. So it doesn't cost you anything, but it helps the channel. And the third way is to purchase things that I sell, like swag, products, and project plans. So swag includes a lot of the shirts that you see me wearing on the channel. Those are all available through Teespring. There's links directly below this video and also on my website. I sell products like the 3D printed stop block, which I featured in a video, and most recently, build plans. I put off making build plans for as long as I could because I knew I'd be a perfectionist and spend way too much time making them, and I was right. But what I've come to realize is that it makes a big impact on those of you who want to recreate builds that I've made. I've gotten a lot of really good feedback on the build plans, which kind of helps softens the blow to how much time I've spent making them. But going forward in the future, when I do projects that I think others might want to do, I'm going to be doing build plans as well. With that, that's all I've got for this video. I really sincerely appreciate everyone for watching and following along on the journey. It's been a ton of work and a blast at the exact same time. So here's to the next two years. I'm really excited to see what this shop looks like at that time, and I hope to see you there on Shop Nation. <laughs>